Hi there, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. Today I am sharing how this layout came together. I don't make many double page layouts, so this one was a lot of fun to make and it actually has inspired me to add double page layouts into my regular scrapbooking mix because this was a lot of fun. I really love having the extra real estate that a double page gives as well as the opportunity to tell maybe longer stories. You'll notice my journaling is quite a bit longer than it usually is here and I was able to scrap three photos and still have plenty of room for lots of beautiful pattern paper and open space this layout came together in a really fun way, so I hope that you join me for the process video. I'm starting by familiarizing myself with the contents of the gather kit. These are the cut files. I was thinking about potentially using that wreath on one side and then having the second half of my double page have something else. So I'm just going to put that aside and keep it in mind, but I don't end up doing that, although I will use the cut file on my next page. I'm starting by having a look at the cardstock that came in the cardstock add-on for the gather kit. Just taking a look at what my options are because I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to use cardstock as my backgrounds. And so it the, the cardstock kit does come with two of each of three different papers and then one of that gold foiled polka dot paper. And I thought that this orange Swiss dot paper, this is from Basil because two pieces of it come in the kit. I thought that would make a really nice background, but it felt like it was going to be a little bit too overwhelming with that very bright, vivid, vivid color. So what I decided to do was go to my stash and grab two pieces of craft paper. I always keep craft cardstock on hand because I consider it to be a staple. I am just cutting off the manufacturer's strip and I'm just pointing out that you do have to measure out the 12 inches because if you use the barcode as a guide, you will trim your paper too large. Now I'm going to cut down my, car my craft cardstock and I'm going to cut it down so that I'm basically taking off a half of an inch on one side and a quarter of an inch on an adjacent side. So this is no longer a square. And the reason for cutting it this way is because I'd like to mat this overall layout, not the individual pages of the layout. So as you see, I need those two pieces of craft of craft cardstock to meet each other in the middle. Even though there will be rings and page protectors in between these two pages, I still like to do whatever I can to try to make a page have a coherent feel as if it belongs together. I'm just going to gut these two pieces of orange Swiss dot cardstock because I definitely love this cardstock and I want to be able to use it in other settings, perhaps even on this page. So I'm just taking out the centers so that I can use it for something else. And just using my trimmer for that. I had been using my cutter pillar crop for my most of my trimming on this project, but for gutting, you have to use a different trimmer because that one you can't, um, you can't start in the middle of a page with that one. So I'm just going to start by adhering those pieces of craft cardstock to my orange cardstock. And in order to line this up, I'm going to use my grid mats on my grid lines on my working mat. And as you can see, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit tricky, tricky to get it straight, but that ATG adhesive is pretty forgiving, especially early on. So before you burnish it, you can usually pull it off without any harm being done to your page. So I'm going to repeat that process, but over to the other side on this page. And now these two pages will meet up beautifully in the center to create one large 12 by 24 inch spread. And one of the reasons that I really focus on principles for pulling together two pages of a double page layout is because for me, I keep all of my pages in D-ring binders. So not only are the two pages going to go into two different page protectors, but there's going to be rings in between them that separate the page. So anything that I can do from a design perspective to help bring them back together visually is going to be helpful. 
So one of the things that I'm going to do on this page is I'm going to have a border that extends both of those pages. So I'm just going to grab my RASCOG where I store all of my punches and the middle tier is where I keep most of my border punches. So I'm thinking maybe a scallop, but then I saw this ticket tear punch and I thought maybe that one would be good. And then one of my patrons who was watching this live stream, because this, this particular video was live streamed for my patron members, one of those viewers suggested that I make a white picket fence and I do have a white picket fence border or a picket fence border but it's a complicated tool. It's it's not that complicated, but it's a tool that I don't use all that often. So I'm going to give it a go and you'll see that in a few minutes. First, I'm going to use the easy punch. This is a, it's called Ticket Tear and it's a border punch from Stampin' Up. And it basically makes these little jagged edges that look like the edge of a ticket that's been torn, but it also looks a little bit like the edges of a postage stamp as well. So I did one strip of that and then I realized, wait a minute, I of course need two because I want this to span both of the pages. And because I had already punched the edge of one of them, it's going to be really hard to make them line up. So I'm just thinking this through and trying to decide how to make it line up. And then I just decided I'm gonna do the, the other side of it because I cut it so that these two pieces are exactly the same but once I border punch it they won't be the same anymore so I just flipped it around and I'll border punch the same piece for a second time and then I will also border punch the second piece on the same side if I don't know if what I said made sense but I hope that it did <laughs> uh, so there's the first piece and now I will border punch the second piece and I'm just making sure that I align the edge of the punch with not only the bumper on the one side, but also I'm lining it up with the design. There's like a little silver design on the other side that helps you make sure that your pieces are straight. I'm going to keep a couple of these little off cuts because sometimes I use them in different places on my page, especially if I do a secondary cluster someplace. So I will put that punch back and now let me just see how this is going to work. I don't want it to be symmetrical. Like I, I do want a bigger gap on one side than on the other side because I just prefer asymmetrical looks. So I'm going to measure this and I'm measuring it to be, I believe I measured it to be one inch. Yep, one inch wide. And so then I'll cut them both down to one inch Oops, my trimmer is brand new and the little rut, the, the little strip that it's supposed to trim into is not quite seasoned yet. So I have to, to trim everything very carefully with a lot of force. So I am going to just adhere these strips to the bottom and lining up my layout helps with that. I'll trim that off and then I'll use that same piece on the other side. And then when it comes to lining up my second piece, I'm going to overlap it a little bit with the design that's already there so that I'm able to make an exact match. So I'm just lining up that red line so that it's overlapped and you can't even tell that it was overlapped there. Now I just wanna make sure that this gap is not the same on both sides. So I just uh, took a look at how big the first gap was and made this gap a little bit smaller. So there we go. Now I'm also going to use this strip from the sticker set that came in the kit. And I'm just going to adhere it where I wanted it to go, trim it off, and then re-adhere it to the other side. And the fact that the, that bottom paper is plaid really makes it easy to line things up. So that looks really great. Sometimes I will outline those border pieces, those border stickers, but I didn't on, in this case, but it would, it would look great outlined as well. Now here comes this tool. This is a Creative Memories punch tool that has 
cartridges. I have three different cartridges for it, but I think you could get a whole lot. And then it has this other piece that allows you to line up your paper. I did need some help from one of my patrons to remember how to use this tool. She kind of walked me through it step by step, which was really, really helpful. So shout out to Anne for helping me with that. And this, I slowed it down so that you could see this tool, it makes it really easy because I, I'm going to show you here, I'm just going to flip it up. There are these little places where those little metal pieces fit in underneath and you can't see it, but you can feel it as you line up your punch. You can feel that it is, is uh, kind of fit into the right space for the next punch. So that makes it really easy. So here I have this long white picket fence that is the length of a sheet of cardstock. This is one of the pieces of cardstock from the cardstock add-on. It's called Walnut Cream and I love this color. It's a smooth pattern paper and I love it. You will see more of these in future kits because I love it. Now I did trim this white picket fence just a smidgen too short. This is a good reminder to always err on the side of leaving things a little bit longer. You can always cut them down later but you'll see a little bit later that I'm going to end up wishing that I had one more post on my white picket fence than what I ended up having. So just bear that in mind whenever you're early in your designing. It's always a good idea to leave things just a little bit longer. What I'd like to do is create a little vignette around this white picket fence and layer it in front of the bottom right hand corner of my photo here of this is the photo of us at the apple orchard and then the other two photos on the other page are photos of us on the way to the apple orchard. I'm going to unstick these stickers so that it will be easier to work with them. I just use my EK success powder tool for that. I'm going to put, a, put aside that extra strip of white picket fence in case I want to use it for something else. And I'm just looking through some of the patterned papers here and pulling out a couple that I might want to use on this page and a couple that I, you know, I'm pretty sure I won't use. I'm just putting those ones over to the left if I think I won't use them. Now this paper has some really nice pumpkins that I thought would layer nicely with the other pumpkins. Now combining two different designs of artwork, like two different vibes of artwork, can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to speak to that a little bit as I go along. I'm going to mat this photo on this orange paper from the kit. This is from the I Love Fall collection from Echo Park. And I really love this paper. It's just such a nice neutral tone on tone option. So I used my Caterpillar crop to cut that down. And that's just going to make the photo have a little bit more presence on the page. This is a piece of paper from the Cartabella Fall Fun collection that came in the kit. And I'm going to fussy cut these two pumpkins. And you'll notice that the design, like the style of these pumpkins is significantly different than the pumpkins that are on the Echo Park I Love Fall stickers. I'm going to combine them anyways. And when you do this, the only principle that I keep in mind for combining really different pieces of artwork like this is that if I do it in one place, I want to make sure I do it in a couple of places. So this isn't the only place that these pumpkins are going to show up and that will help make it feel a little bit more pulled together. Now I'm going all in on this little vignette that I'm ending up making on the side of my photo here by grabbing a lawn fawn die that cuts grass. And I typically use these dies for making scenes on my cards, but I'm going to use this one on a scrapbook page. I love using card making dies and stamps on scrapbook pages. It's one of my favorite things. I like getting a lot of use out of my supplies and this is one way of doing it. So as you can see, I used one of the pattern papers in the kit and then I grabbed this Distress Oxide that I have on hand. It's mowed lawn and I'm just checking my swatches to see if it's going to be a color that I might like with this. And it's actually a, just a little bit too bright. It does look good, but it's not different enough. I wanted the edges of this grass to stand out a little bit more. 
and it's a very, very subtle look. So I decided to grab my Distress Ink in Peeled Paint because that's a little bit darker. It's quite a bit darker, as you can see, and that's giving me more of the look that I want. I want to, con I want to provide a fair amount of contrast with these grass blades. And so I just used a nonstick mat that I have on hand. I just keep this rolled up over to the side of my workspace that I can pull it out pretty easily. I like to clean it up with a baby wipe so that it doesn't make a mess the next time I use it. So my thought was that I would put this grass behind my white picket fence or in front of my white picket fence. But when I put it in front of the white picket fence, see how there's a gap and you can see the blue background? It won't be a blue background but it'll be a craft background but you can still see it and I don't love that so what I'm deciding to do is I'm actually going to cut a second piece of grass so even though I put my dies away and everything this is my RASCOG where I keep my my die cut machine I use a big shot as my main machine and uh, I also keep uh, some of my dies in that RASCOG as well including this binder of scene setting dies for card making. So if I layer that behind the fence and then the other one in front of the fence, I think that's going to solve my problem of having a little gap showing through. At first I thought I would re-ink this, like I would ink these grass blades in the same combination, meaning add the mowed lawn and then put the, the, uh, the peeled paint on top of it, but I didn't think I needed to. I wanted them to look the same, but I thought that the peeled paint probably covered up the mowed grass or the mowed lawn pretty pretty much, and so I, I didn't think I needed to blend the two of them together to make it look the same, and I don't think I did, so that was a good call. Now, it just so happens that this die is the perfect length for a photo, for the photo that I have, which is six inches wide. I believe. It's a little bit less than four, but it's six inches wide. I printed it on a four by six photo, uh, photo paper. So I just, as you see, I just glued it down so that it covered up the white border on the bottom of my photo, and then I trimmed it down so that none of it was hanging over. Now I'm going to pop up my white picket fence and the pumpkins that are attached to it with some foam adhesive. And I just want to, to have just a little bit of dimension and a little bit of shadow cast behind that picket fence so that it just looks a little bit more realistic and gives me a little bit more interest here. It, I also find that when I'm layering a whole lot of things, it's nice to put some foam adhesive between some of your layers just to help differentiate some of those layers. And there's a lot of layers here, like I've got layered stickers with the layered with the layer of the picket fence plus two layers of grass. So that's that's kind of a lot. So it's nice to pop up one of them. Now I can top off this layer here with the white with the thinner strip of the blades of grass. I'm going to put some foam adhesive along the bottom part of that of those blades of grass just to hold the space because some of this piece is going to layer with the piece that already has foam dots on it on the the white picket fence piece but some of it is going to overhang and I need and I don't want it to sag down I want it to hold its space so I just used more of those foam dots and I grabbed my little finger dauber that I've been using all along and I just noticed that the torn edges and cut edges of this piece of grass were looking a little stark so I just added a little bit of ink to the edges there and I just tried to blend it out so it wasn't obvious as opposed to just like a harsh line of ink on the edges. I just blended it out a little bit and I really love how that looks. It's very fun. And you'll see later how it would have been better if I had one more picket in that white picket fence. But for now, it looks like it's like it's OK. I don't know what I'm going to end up doing. Right. So I'm going to trim down at least one piece of this grass here. To, it looks like maybe two pieces just so that you could see a little bit more of that pumpkin poking out. And you could trim down even more if you wanted more of the of the little pieces to poke out, but I really liked how it looked. It almost looks like that little critter is hiding behind the grass. 
Now I'm having a look at the die cut set that came in the kit. This is more of the Echo Park I Love Fall collection. So it works really well with the stickers that are already on this photo. And I really love this big sentiment here that says the colors of autumn. I like, I like this darker one too. I, I actually prefer the design of the darker one, but I think that the lighter the lighter die cut works a little bit better. It balances with the light color of the white picket fence. It's almost the exact same color actually. And so when I place this, see how there's a little gap where the white picket fence ends and there's just a little bit of grass peeking through there. I want to see the second pumpkin. Um, and I think, you know, part of me wants to close that gap with this embellishment, but another part of me doesn't. So I'm going to, I, I'm going to adhere it kind of like this, and then I'm going to put these fussy cut pumpkins to help with the layering here, just to kind of help blend these two in. I'm putting the little wrappers back on the adhesive so that it doesn't stick to my work surface as I'm playing around with it. I'm going to overlap these pumpkins so that they are bridging the gap between that, the colors of autumn die cut and the other layers that are behind it. And that, I think that that looks really great. I love how this is looking so far. Now I do want to put more of these pumpkins as I mentioned because it's such a different art style. I do want to repeat it at least one more place. So I'm trying to find a set of pumpkins that are different than the set that I already have and there are very subtle differences between these little clusters of pumpkins. So I had to look fairly carefully to, to make sure that I wasn't cutting the exact same set over again. But these ones have the orange pumpkin over on the right hand side instead of over on the left hand side. So these two balance really nicely with each other in terms of having the larger on the outside edges and also having the orange one on the outside edges. So that these two clusters of this style of pumpkin are going to kind of almost be bookends to the grass layered area like the little vignette. I'm going to have that little pumpkin extend out so that it again it 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 covers up the harsh edge of the grass that's layered there that I cut from the die cut. So now that I have a pretty good sense of how this cluster of embellishments is going is coming together for the main photo of this page, I'm going to pull out the overall structure of the page, so those two background papers again, and start to figure out how my overall design is going to be. I definitely want to use this tractor. I love this tractor. And the or, the apple orchard where we go every year, we, we go to different ones every year, actually. Like we repeat sometimes, but oftentimes we go to different ones. And they always also have pumpkin patches. So that's why there's lots of pumpkins on this page, even though it is a page about apple picking. So this pattern paper is from the, Har the Farmstead Harvest Collection from American Crafts. It comes in the kit, and this is one of my very favorite pattern papers in the whole kit. Love the little mushrooms, love the little sprigs of leaves. It's just so cute with little pods and acorns and lots of fallish things. This is another paper from the I Love Fall collection from Echo Park. And I love that it reads as a neutral craft, but it just has a little bit of interest on it from that fall, leaving, fall leaves pattern that's on it. So I thought what I might do is extend both of those pattern papers across the gap. And that's another principle that I have for just making sure that a double page pulls together and feels like two pages that go together is to have plenty of things extend across the gap. I already have that border that I created at the bottom that extends across the gap, but doing this even more on other parts of the page really does help pull this layout together. I am matting these photos with a different color of cardstock, or it's actually pattern paper there. And that is another piece of the Cartabella Fall Fun collection. And I just had this little scrap of this 
card of this pattern paper, the one with the orange on it, that I matted the other page on, the other photo on, uh, there was just a little scrap that was conveniently the right size to use as a strip behind these photos. So I, I did mat these two, these three photos differently as far as these two are matted one way and then that other one is matted the other way. And uh, so that is something that just kind of sets these photos apart because they are from a different moment on the same day. So here is my overall kind of cluster of photo of papers that will be layered together on the main part of this double page. So I'm going to outline it before I chop it in half. Outlining before you add something to your background paper is a little bit easier and just in case you go off the page. Now here these two are already connected to each other so I had to be a little bit careful that I didn't go off the page when I was outlining that inner pattern paper but on this one I can go a little bit easier and quicker because it's all right if I go off the page it's just going to go on my work mat. Now outlining these two helps to differentiate the layers and also helps to pull them together and make them look like they belong. See how that outlining just adds structure to the page by really emphasizing those rectangular shapes. Now at this point I'm thinking my journaling might go in this big gap in the center with the pattern paper. There's like a, a fairly large gap between the one photo and the other two photos and so I thought what I might do is create an embellishment maybe with a frame or something that I can put that that journaling in between these two sets of photos. I want to use a doily from the kit and so I took one out just to to not forget to do that and what I thought I might do is actually use this foam piece which isn't going to actually make it onto the page but I thought I might use this foam piece. The reason I'm using so many big pieces and, and this big foam pieces is one of those it came in the thickers from the from the kit is that on a double page I tend to have a little bit more real estate and so I like to splurge and use some of the larger items that might not fit well on a single page so what I thought I might do is put this little cluster of leaves and a pumpkin and this is a third style of artwork for pumpkins. So this is the third kind of pumpkin on this page. But again, I think mixing it up and making sure that if you're going to mix it, mix it a lot. And that way it looks like you mixed it intentionally instead of accidentally using the wrong pumpkin in a place or something, right? So I'm going to, be, before I decide on that, I'm having a bit of trouble deciding. So um, my, my tape broke on my ATG and because I was live streaming, I didn't want to stop and deal with it. So I just switched to another tape runner here. I'm using my Tombow tape runner. I love them both. They're both pretty equal as far as quality of the adhesive goes and ease of use. So I, as you saw, I just adhered the whole thing as one big piece and uh made it span the gap and now I'm just going to use scissors to cut through it from the back side because that way I know where to cut. And what I've decided to do, first of all I'll just cut that doily so I'm not wasting half of it and I've decided to put this cluster of the pumpkin with the little leaves and stuff in this corner of this paper of the craft colored paper from the I Heart, I Heart Fall, I Love Fall collection. Now this is another opportunity to use another fussy cut pumpkin set uh, from that same Fall Fun collection from Cartabella. And this is my third version of this art style of pumpkin. So it's at this point, it's really pulled together and it does span the gap. So I have some of this artwork on this side of the page and I have some of this artwork on the other side of the page. So that works really well. I'll just layer that with the existing pumpkin piece. I moved it up a little bit from where I first put it. And now I am going to outline this because I did outline the pattern paper on the other side. So I want this to look like it belongs. And at this point, I've decided to layer this with the 
existing layers of pattern paper that are on the page. At first I was going to float my photos out on the main background, like on the main craft cardstock background, but I like how it looks all pulled together. And this is another thing that helps my double page feel more pulled together is that I'm anchoring this item on the left hand page with some of the items that are already on the right hand page. This tractor that I wanted to use so much is another thing that is spanning the gap and it helps to draw your eye together and keep this page reading as a single. And when you're spanning the gap, sometimes I will you cut a photo or an embellishment like that. You just want to be strategic about where you're cutting it so that it's not too obvious, like you wouldn't want to cut down the center of somebody's face or something. So I just made the cut be where the tractor attaches to the little, uh, the little trailer that it's pulling. Now I'm adding a fourth kind of pumpkin here with these puffy stickers from the, from the Farmstead Harvest collection from American Crafts. And at first I put one of those puffy pumpkins in each of my little clusters of pumpkins. And then I added this autumn puffy sticker as well from the Farmstead Harvest, just to bridge across from one of those pumpkin clusters to the other pumpkin cluster. It also covers over the harsh edge, the harsh straight edge of the grass and makes it feel a little bit more organic. And then I'm just tucking these very tiny Farmstead Harvest puffy stickers every here and there. And I couldn't decide if I wanted to put a puffy sticker in the tractor that in the trailer that the tractor is pulling. I'm going to use this die cut. Remember this one? I liked it better than the the colors of autumn die cut, but I went with the autumn's the colors of autumn one because it had the white on it. Well, I decided because I have so much real estate here that I'm not really using, I might as well use this second die cut piece that's fairly large. It fills up some of the space there, but still allows plenty of that pattern paper to really shine. I'm tucking another little sticker here in the corner. It's a wreath and I can't remember what it says because I have covered it since then, but it provides a little bit of an anchor of another embellishment cluster that will start to grow up there in the top left hand corner. I'm still thinking about using that foam piece right here in this gap. And what I'm thinking I might do is do some journaling around it add some uh, lines and then have that circle, that oval kind of interrupt the lines. I'm just going to add these word stickers over here. These are more from the puffy sticker set. And I just really love how they looked layered on the photo like that. I wanted to put just one more little thing here on the colors of autumn die cut. So I just put a little tiny puffy mushroom there. It pulls in from the mushrooms on that patterned paper that I love so much. And then I'm putting the word fall over top of whatever that, that uh, it might've said give thanks or something, but it was too tiny and too fussy looking. Uh, I wanted to actually move that sticker, but it wouldn't detach nicely from the, from the doily. So I decided to just leave it. I'm gonna layer some other leaf stickers here and also some puffy stickers so that the give thanks is completely covered. It's not a Thanksgiving layout, so I didn't want it to look like that. Now I wanted to bring some green up to this cluster because so far I have green in each of these clusters and I wanted to just make sure that that, uh, that one also had some green. And there was not so much green in this bottom cluster. So I added a little leaf and then I also added the word thankful. Now I just said that this is not a Thanksgiving <laughs> layout, but I think that, you know, fall is a good time to be thankful in general anyways, just because, you know, the harvest and spending time together as a family, we are often, you know, fairly reflecting at this, uh, on this trip. I added this puffy sticker up here that says loved and that is because each of these clusters has something fairly dark in it like a piece of of really dark gray or really dark brown and that one didn't so I added the loved because it's just a piece of darkness that that uh, provides that repetition of the dark element. I have more of these puffy stickers that I think work really well so I'm just figuring out places to tuck them. And this one over here in the corner, I think is going to look really great. 
that's on the far right hand corner right here. So I'll just tuck that in like that. It just adds a little bit more organic look and feel to the edge there. Now I took a little bit of a break on my live stream and came back and decided to, I, I think I wasn't, I didn't have the right camera on for some of this. So that's why you missed a little bit of this, but I cut out the autumn sticker from the thickers the the foam thickers and then these are the letter stickers that come in the kit they're from simple stories they're color vibes and they're just a really nice basic block black letter and i love them and i'm going to combine the autumn word from the from the foam thickers that's the set right there and spell out the word tradition i'm just using some waxed paper to help me with my placement of the word tradition and these green stickers from pink fresh studio thought about layering this foam sticker right there but I'm not going to it's just a little bit too much but these green puffy letter stickers came in the embellishment add-on for the gather kit and I'm going to use those as well my first thought was that I would make this a fairly long title that says uh, it's an autumn tradition to go to the valley and so it's an and then to go to the valley each year would be also in that green puffy letter sticker and it would be below the word tradition but I'm going to change my mind and you'll see why in a second so I'm, I'm putting the it's an in these beautiful green puffy letter stickers and they pick on up on the other greens that are already on the page so I love how this title brings together some greens some orange and pops of black now I'm going to center this. I don't usually center my titles. I like them justified instead, like either left or right. But for this one, I'm going to center it. So I'm, I'm putting the N and the T in just to make sure that it is centered. And then I'll, I'll place the other letters and try to decide. One of my patrons there was giving me an idea for the title, for title placement. And as I place this, I realize I could have scooched these letters over a little bit more. So because they're foam letter stickers, they're fairly easy to move around. So I'm just going to scooch them over so that they're just a little bit less crowded. There we go. I'll use my T ruler because they it was looking a little like the like the line at the bottom was not quite straight and a T ruler is a good thing to have on hand for just lining up things on those few occasions when you want to line things up. I don't usually like things lined up but in this case I did want it lined up. Now at this point look at how beautiful that title is just as it is. I don't want to add anything to it so at this point I've decided this is going to be my title and I do want to repeat the black foam somewhere else on the page and especially on the other side of the page. So I thought about putting 2023 but it looked like that was going to be too big so I just put 23 with a little apostrophe beside it for the year. And of course it's a fall photo so I don't really need to put the month because it happened in fall of 2023 and that'll be pretty apparent. I'm just talking with my patrons here about how I love combining a small letter sticker with a big letter sticker and so oftentimes the kits that I design will have both a large sticker and a smaller letter sticker and usually the smaller one or the more risky one or the, the one that's kind of a little bit more adventurous will be in the embellishment add-on. So one of my patrons suggested that I use those beautiful wood veneer leaves on this page and I'm definitely going to do that but I am not quite ready for that yet apparently. I guess I just wanted to enjoy my layout for a little bit before I <laughs> decided what else to do. What I have decided to do is to add some journaling. Now this layout was always going to have a lot of journaling on it and at first it was going to be on this place that I was just gesturing, the, the space between the two photos that has a big chunk of pattern paper. But I kind of like the idea of just letting that air out and be, <laughs> be kind of its own space with beautiful pattern paper. So I've decided to add my journaling right here. Now it's going to do out my lines with 
marker, but I decided to do them with pencil because I didn't know exactly how many lines I would need and I didn't want to end up with too many. Ending up with not enough is not that big of a problem, but ending up with too many sometimes is a problem. So I just started with the number of lines that I thought would look good from a design perspective. So I have, oops, I put an extra line there where I didn't need one. I have about the same amount of vertical space under the journaling as what I have above the title. So I wanted those two spaces to be about the same. Now my journaling here says, so it carries on from the title, which is, it's an autumn tradition. And then the journaling says, for us to go to the Annapolis Valley each fall, we always pick apples and often also get some pumpkins. We try to steer clear of the touristy places and go more, go to more natural orchards with less of a commercial feel. We have lots of photos and memories of going with our international students and various configurations of our extended family as well. This year we tried Dempsey's, which was a little more commercial than our usual spots, but it was fun and had some extra, some extras like apple smashing area, a petting zoo and a shop. So I'm just going back and I am underlining all of my journaling lines just freehand and that just helps them look anchored to the page. I like how my handwriting looks when it's underlined more than when it's just floating out there in space. So I almost always will underline my journaling. I'm just being a little bit fussy here fixing up those letters. They were fine before but now I'm feeling like this page is done and as you can see I did end up putting one of those puffy stickers in the tractor trailer. I, one of my patrons suggested that it did look good there so I went with that and I am going to place three little pieces of confetti in each of my three clusters. When you have your clusters on a double page layout, just make sure that at least one of your clusters is on the other page. So, and you don't need to have just three, you could have more than three. Um, right here, I have three. And I, I feel like using design principles in like a traditional way really does help with a double page layout more, more so than with single page layouts. It's just, it, it seems to me like there's a little bit more of a design challenge for me personally, because I don't do as many double page layouts. So um, I'm, I might be maybe a little bit less adventurous with them, but I just find that these design principles, like having a three, like a visual triangle on your page, having three of something or odd numbers of things, repetition. So I have a puffy, at least one puffy sticker in each of those three clusters. I have um, the colors represented in each of those three clusters. And I also have different forms of artwork represented in most of those three clusters as well. So I ended up placing little triads of my confetti pieces with one of each of the three colors. So there's a bronze color, a really beautiful rich green color. It's almost like a tealy green and a very light yellow in this confetti mix. And it's beautiful and fall like. I just adore it. And I'm just using it to not necessarily look like splatter, but to more be like little bubbles or like little, little circly embellishments floating out on the background. I also placed a few of them amongst my clusters just to break up the clusters and add a little bit of visual interest with a different texture because they're shiny and smooth and reflective and fun. So it's nice to, to uh, put them in with your clusters as well. So let's get back to those wood veneers that Tara suggested that I use on this page. I thought I would put one up in the top and one in the like one in the top left corner and one in the bottom right hand corner. They're very distinct items and they really do pull the page together in terms of, you know, a beginning and an end. And then that little tractor that goes between the two pages, it's facing in the direction that I want your eye to go. So your eye might start up at the top left hand corner with this leaf that I'm about to glue down right now. It takes the tractor across the page and then it ends with the leaf down in the bottom right hand corner. And if your eye does all of those things, it will take in exactly the things that I want it to. And this makes me feel very, very happy. <laughs> I did end up changing the placement of this leaf 
and I like it better here. I, I just kind of forgot where I had intended it to go, but it looks good there. So before I share the photos, just a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen, so big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad-free access to all of my process videos, real-time unedited versions of my videos, as well as a monthly live stream and a few other things as well. So here is how this page turned out. The the first side and the second side and the whole thing together. There are also some more close-ups here. I love how the journaling looks underneath of the title. The title just gives it such, uh, such presence on the page and then for the journaling to just naturally come next. I just really love how that looks. Here's this cute little cluster with the little animals and the pumpkins all layered together in a cute little scene. And my little tractor that draws your eye from one page to the next is just really cute. Here are some of the places that you can find me over on Patreon, uh, over on Patreon, as well as on our Facebook group. Please like and share and subscribe to my videos if you haven't already, because it really does help other people be able to discover my channel and my videos. So thanks so much for watching. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.